Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. I am your host, ASAF Adonai, and uh, uh, on my immediate left, affectionately, our aging rocker, Emmett. <coughs> and how you been, Emmett? Oh, I've been all right. Still sort of suffering with allergies, <coughs> but I took allergy medication before I came. So. Yeah, and this is going to be an interesting show. Um, we're going to use our imagination and talk about time travel. Yep. Time travel to the Old Testament mm -hmm. of the Bible. Yep, yep. <laughs> I think that'll be really fun. Yep. We're not going to change the Bible. We're just yeah, going to. Exactly. All we're going to do is just use our imagination and go mm -hmm. back in time. Exactly. And um, have fun with it. And where I got the idea to go back in time, just last Saturday, they did a tribute to Irwin Allen, uh -huh. the creator uh -huh. of uh, the science fiction shows of the 60s. Irwin mm -hmm. Allen created. Land of the Giants, mm -hmm. which you've heard me talk about. Mm -hmm. He created Lost in Space, Time Tunnel, and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Mm -hmm. He also created Earthquake and Towering Inferno and a bunch of other movies. But we're, the tribute, they just did mostly the uh, science fiction shows, mm -hmm. the television shows. And of course, you've heard me talk about Land of the Giants. Yeah, I loved it, yeah. Yeah, but... I'm going to focus more on Time Tunnel mm -hmm. in this segment here. We'll talk about Land of the Giants, but I'm going to focus on Time Tunnel and so on. But before we do, you want to start us off? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, please bless our food and our time together in Jesus' name. Yes. I'm in agreement with that. So, um, <coughs> anyway, they did, um, <coughs> they did a tribute to Owen Allen on uh, MeTV just last Saturday. Yep. You, gonna, you all right there? I still have the allergies. There's really nothing, you know, that... <coughs> well, if you had to cough it up, just, there's like some napkins over there. Yeah, I know. <coughs> but anyway, um, they did a tribute to him just last Saturday, and they showed all those television shows of the past, mm -hmm. and I stayed up and taped them all. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I got my own VCR out. I taped every single one of those shows. Wonderful. <coughs> so, it'll be fun. I'm going to yep. play this while we talk. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to why, uh, talking about this today. Yep. <coughs> Here's the theme song. Mm -hmm. The theme song. Mm -hmm. This guy's in love with you. Yeah, it's beautiful. <clears throat> and I never mm -hmm. get tired of playing this song. Yep. It's just such a beautiful song. Yeah, it is. Such an easy listening song. I love it, right? Reason. Yep. <clears throat> Here's the conclusion. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that's it. Yep. This guy's in love with you. But anyway, getting back to talking about uh -huh. time travel, and before we talk about uh -huh. Erwin Allen and time travel, I want to make an announcement. Mm -hmm. I have a friend here in town, Mr. Harold Fox. He will be getting married on this show next Thursday. So for our television audience that may want to tune in, and watch it, it's going to be a delight mm -hmm. to have him. I'm very humbled, first of all. His uh, fiancee's name is Francine, and it was her idea to get married on this show. I didn't think of it. I didn't even Fascinating. Ask they contacted me and said, hey, can we get married on your show? Mm -hmm. So Harold and Francine will get, be getting married on this very show next Thursday, a week from today. So I'm all excited and very humbled, yeah. and uh, Emmett will be witnessing, and uh, Linda will be singing. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, two of my neighbors may be here just to witness it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you may have 
you met them before, Cheryl and BJ. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be here next week just to Very watch good. it. And Judge Holloway is going to yes. marry this couple. And I just think that's a wonderful thing. I, I think it's a wonderful thing when any person or persons, I should say, gets married. Yeah. It's just a wonderful thing. Whether it's a fancy wedding or a small, simple one, yeah. expensive, inexpensive, mm-hmm. it's special to them. Exactly. And, well, I wonder uh, what set uh, we're going to use. This, oh, oh um, I'll probably background. use uh, maybe this set here or one of the other virtual sets because uh-huh. they don't care. <laughs> okay. They just they just want to get married on the show, and, and I'm really humbled by that. So uh-huh. I'll play a piece of that. Yeah. You know, for some reason, I've never liked that particular marriage theme. I don't know why. I mean, I know you're going to use it, but it's great. But in a Catholic a wedding, we just use something else, I guess, yeah. Well, there's other songs you can use. Like, for example, you can use this song here. This is Prelude and C by Bach. Yeah, I'd probably use that or something else. Well, everybody's different, C. Uh-huh. And there's Claire de Lune. Uh, you may recognize it. You may have heard me play this before. Yes, that's a good one. <laughs> Here's the intro. Fascinating, yep. Yeah. That's very good. I'm going to stop on that chord. But there's so many yeah. songs. In fact, I was watching a soap opera once, <laughs> yeah. of all things. And the bride that was walking down the aisle, instead of the traditional Here Comes the Bride, mm. they were actually playing the music of Claire de Lune as she was walking down the aisle mm. with her, her flowers. <clears throat> and I thought that was pretty cool. So um, this couple here, I'm sure they're, they're flexible. They're not going to really care. I, my goal for them yes. is just to make it as special as possible. Wonderful. You know, I've even, of one of my favorite Wyndham Hill artists is William Ackerman. He's a solo guitar player, does beautiful, beautiful music. One of his songs has been played for weddings. I have a live album of Wyndham Hill, I think William Ackerman for Wyndham Hill, <coughs> and um, a live guitar sampler. And he, he was saying at a live concert, you know, this song, Turning, Turning Back, has even been played at weddings. But I didn't even know. It has a lot of meaning for people, but to me it's just a... Um, about a trip from Missouri, something like this. Here's Turning, Turning Back, and this beautiful guitar. I mean beautiful, one of my favorite guitar bits. So that's even been used at wedding, you know, beautiful. <coughs> okay, cool. It doesn't really matter, Yeah, you know. yeah. <coughs> I love William Ackerman. But anyway, Harold and Francine, they're gonna, it's their wedding next week, and it's just going to be such a wonderful Wonderful. Thing. And I'm really humbled that they want to do it on mm-hmm. this show. Mm-hmm. So, praise God. <laughs> you know? It'll well, one cool. time, this is, this is a true story. I can't remember what it was. <clears throat> Someone on their, as far as their wedding gift or anniversary gift, mm-hmm. his wife requested copies of some of my TV shows, The Awful Truth About Society. This was several years wow, ago. Oh, really? So I picked out some because his husband wanted to give, give it to her for, um, you know, an anniversary gift. Yeah, that I, I awesome. as, yeah, that, that's really humbling. I uh, would assume that Harold and mm. Francine will make copies of the show next oh, week yeah. to, for their families. Yes, and, absolutely. You know, what's humbling about it is 10 years from now, they're going to be able to look back. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want, I want it to be special for mm-hmm. them because mm-hmm. of that. So, but anyway, let's, let's, let's go to our imagination. Now, how this whole thing started, especially for the television audience, last Saturday, as I mentioned, yeah. they did a tribute to mm-hmm. Irwin Allen. They showed mm-hmm. all of his television shows of the past. Land of the Giants, Time Tunnel, uh-huh. Lost in Space, and Voice at the Bottom of the Sea. And then they did the television show Planet of the Apes. Oh. After. Not, not the movie with Charlton Heston, yes, yes. the TV series. And... Uh, I, as I mentioned, I taped the whole thing, stood up. I stood up till like four in the morning, oh, cool. something like that, because I wanted to tape all those shows. <laughs> I'd been looking for Land mm-hmm. of the Giants for years and couldn't find it. Yeah. And they actually showed the pilot episode. Cool. The two hour one? The two or one? Or is it a one it's, hour? It's a one hour one, but it's, it's you know, how they, yeah, yeah. How they crashed. <laughs> Basically, um, 
before we go to Time Tunnel, the, the land of the giants, they were on their way to London mm -hmm. on a flight. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got sucked into this little cloud in space yes. that plunged <laughs> them into this world of giants. Yep. And at first they didn't know they were on this planet of the yep. giants. And uh, how they found out the captain and the co-pilot went to radio for help when they landed. Mm -hmm. And this giant car just runs yep. right <laughs> over them and they duck for their lives and they look up. Mm -hmm. And then they hear these uh, footsteps like this, something like uh -huh. this. And they run back toward the ship. Everybody strap in. We're taking yep. off. <laughs> and uh, uh, then this big giant, this teenager, like, he picks up this yep. ship. <coughs> and they have all that music. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. da, 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 all that crazy music mm -hmm. on there. And that's when they knew they were in trouble. And that's how the series started. But focusing on Time Tunnel, the episode that they had last uh -huh. week, <coughs> and I think it was the pilot episode, it starts out with the senator. Uh-huh. And they take him out into a desert, and then there's an underground city under this desert. Uh huh. <coughs> and <coughs> the scientists were building the time tunnel. Uh huh. <coughs> the reason the senator was yeah. there because he wanted to pull the plug, the sponsorship from the time tunnel because he didn't see any progress. <coughs> uh huh. And that didn't sit well with one of the time tra mm -hmm. travelers, or before he became a time traveler, you know. So in the middle of the night, he gets up. James Darren's character. He gets up, he's one of the creators of the time tunnel, and he says, I'll prove that this thing works. He goes back in time, right? Mm -hmm. And it actually works, but see, there was something wrong with the time tunnel because they didn't finish, you know, if they had just waited a little bit longer mm -hmm. to finish what they needed to do to the mm -hmm. tunnel. So that's how come the creator gets yeah. trapped in there. Mm -hmm. And so his other assistant, decides to go into the time tunnel mm -hmm. to help his friend. Mm -hmm. And that's how the premise of the show starts. Mm -hmm. So they go they go back in time and um, I think it was nineteen twelve the um, mm -hmm. the night that the the Titanic was gonna go down. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so they end up on the Titanic just before the ship was gonna go down a few hours mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And the time travelers were trying to warn the captain yep. to turn <coughs> that ship mm -hmm. But um, the captain thought they were just being treasonous and mm. stowaways and starting trouble. So the captain locks them up for a while. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the episode, the ship does go down anyway. So that was kind of the premise of Time Tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to explain that synopsis to use the imagination of the Old Testament. If you could go back in time, what period of the Old Testament would you go back to? Oh, like, oh, there's a gnat flying around, that's why, or there's napkins on my soda. Well, that's easy. That would be the beginning. Adam and Eve. I you go would, back to the yes, beginning of time? would want to warn them. Maybe even show them a newspaper footage That's what of they did war. on the time tunnel, you know? And I would warn them, do not eat of the forbidden fruit. It will be a disaster. You will know good and evil, but you will experience it, and you will have the original sin and call it the fall of mankind. Paradise will be lost. Mm -hmm. You'll be thrown out of paradise. So say no to that old servant, and <coughs> paradise will be restored. But paradise will, it will have war, chaos, disease, conflict, and the human race, until our Lord's you know, death on the cross to send a redeemer, will be shut out of paradise. Mm -hmm. Sir, heaven, this is a disaster. Don't do it. I don't know how I would go back you know, in time and get you know, before. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you yeah. know, the funny thing, if you analyze that, if you were to go back in time and they didn't eat the fruit, yeah. then yes. there would be no reason for all the other things that happen later. If you can get that thing, you can... Yeah, I thought I had my... That's odd. No, I can I, see oh, it. Yeah. I can see it there. Uh, there we are, yes, yes. <coughs> Maybe what you could do is just take a piece of your bread just and put it on that counter, and then when he lands on it, you can get him that way. <laughs> He's after the soda. <clears throat> yeah. But I wonder if that wouldn't violate the laws of space and time. I don't think so, at least according to science fiction, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you use your imagination. Now, we know there's no such thing as time travel. Yeah, yeah. But according to the rules, like on Star Trek anyway, mm -hmm. when you, uh, with time travel, uh -huh. if you go back in time uh -huh. and try to change, uh -huh. or not change something, but warn or fix it, it's going to happen anyway. Uh -huh. But that's just fun imagination, you know. And, and uh, yeah. According to Superman, the Superman movie, 
You are not allowed to interfere with the laws of space and time. I remember that, yeah. And he also, kind of like Gallifrey and Doctor Who, you weren't allowed in certain ways. And I can't remember the whole thing, like Trials of the Time Lords or something, a Time Lord or something. Uh -huh. But anyway, you just wonder if the Lord, our Lord would not allow that. He might not allow that. I don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know, but we're just using our imagination. But according to mm. the laws of time, yeah. you can't change it anyway. Interesting. But all that's science fiction. It's not real. Oh, yeah, yeah. Star Trek, mm -hmm. they're fun shows to watch, but they're not real. Yeah. But it's fun to use your imagination. Yes. But that's what I would do, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if I could go back in time, even if I don't change it, I would like to see the flood. Uh-huh. I'd like to witness that flood. Mm -hmm. And before, not not because I want to see anyone drown, no. Uh huh. But I want I want to start it from the time Noah gets the call to build mm -hmm. the ark, and I would like to see what it was like at that time mm -hmm. when he was warning everybody yep. to prepare because judgment was coming. I'd like to see that. Yeah. And witness the actual mm -hmm. water falling out of the sky mm -hmm. and the flood. If you think about it, that must have been very, very frightening. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Oh, How yes, indeed. that must have been at that time? <coughs> yeah. Because there was no such thing as rain, you know. It had never rained on the earth prior to the flood. For some reason, I thought it had even in the Garden of Paradise. How else would no, they have the flowers? It was oh, a mist. Okay. If you oh, okay. read the book of Genesis, I've read that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the Lord caused a mist that huh. came out of the ground at huh. that time. Because there was no one to till the ground. Like, yeah, yeah. Originally. Mm -hmm. And there was a mist that came up. Hmm. It says that in Genesis, there was a mist that came up and watered the the, the uh. Uh, plants and so on. Uh. So naturally, if somebody's going to warn someone that water's <coughs> going to fall out of the sky, mm -hmm. they're not going to believe it because there was never no rain. I'll have to recheck that. I've got a couple of Bibles. Yeah, uh, it's in um, Genesis, I think, chapter 1 or 2. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've read that many, many times, but I don't remember a mist. And I remember what drawing of the water from the... Well, the whole thing, you know, big things, you know. Well, you can check it out, but mm -hmm. the King James has mist. And uh, I assume that's some sort of a water or something there. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, I don't, I don't have the Old Testament of the King James, so yeah. you have something different, you know. Well, it's okay. You can check it out. But Definitely. I think it's in Genesis either 1 or 2. It mm -hmm. talks about the mist mm -hmm. that came from the ground. That water. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. Because there was no one to till the ground until uh -huh. man was made. Mm -hmm. But getting back to going back to Noah's time, yeah, that would be kind of interesting to witness that yes. and see that. And then... If I could go back in time, I don't know about changing it, but I'd like to see the fight between David and Goliath. Uh huh. <coughs> mm hmm. That must have been something. Mm hmm. So, I'd like to see that. Maybe the Tower of Babel. Yeah. I'd like to witness that, too. And uh, they had a Star Trek episode called Babel. <laughs> that was very good. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know what to see. There are a lot of cool. Mm. Old Testament stories. There's just so many. Yeah. I guess you wouldn't want to go into anyone in the New Testament, would you? Or there not? might be a few uh, New Testament stories. I would probably be more <laughs> interested in the Old Testament because you hear yeah. more about those stories, I think. I would want to go to the wedding feast at Cana. Yeah, that if only fun. just to meet Jesus, yeah. have some wine with him because he made an excellent wine and hang. But would I be kicked? I'd probably be kicked out of the Jewish wedding because I'm not one of the invited guests. But if our Lord could, he's one of the invited guests, you know. Yeah, I don't it'd know. Be it'd be easier but again, yeah. would our Lord allow me to go back in time and visit him in the New Testament with the wedding feast? He might not allow it. He said, Emmett, this is not your time and kick me back, you know, into the 21st I don't know. century. You can use your imagination and all that. Yeah, you know. definitely. That'd be fascinating. I wouldn't mind going back to that time and see that too. Yeah. Um, but speaking of, that, speaking of that period, they had an episode on uh, Focus on the Family, this children's show, uh -huh. their children version, uh -huh. where the kids actually went in a time machine and mm -hmm. went back to uh, the time of the Jesus turning the water into wine. Fascinating. That was so, it was just a children's yeah. show. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I'll, when I get to heaven, I'll have to ask our Lord these questions. It'd be fascinating. Yeah. Do you know this song? Isn't that a television um, show, like a comedy or something? No, not even close. Oh, Time After Time. Yeah. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I never cared for that movie too much, yeah. I've seen it, you know. Just... Mm. Well, this is called Time After Time. Cindy yep. Lauper. Yep. It's a beautiful song, I think. Yep. 
have seen that movie a couple of times, yo. that on easy 102 and even goldfinger not goldfinger but f from russia with love Can oh yeah let me yeah. do that for you yeah. i haven't played that in a while i'll play that for you mm -hmm. to russia with love mm -hmm. oh i'll do it for you mm. no it was octopussy sorry it was the one from octopussy yeah to Octopussy, you know. I didn't see that one. That was a good one. That was very good. <laughs> this is a beautiful yeah, uh, it is. melody. Yeah, to Russia yeah. with love. But, and yeah, I didn't see the Octopussy film at all. That yet, was but, very good. Um, um, My I favorite was Moonraker. Moonraker? Yeah. That's your personal favorite part, y'all? Because it was science fiction and lasers! <laughs> <laughs> That's why in Space Wars. I'm going to play Goldfinger since you're doing it. Uh, lasers! Space Wars! All the space wars and the lasers! Yeah, they did it right after Star Wars because that was so such a popular theme, you know? Yeah. That was the best one. That was the first James Bond film that I ever saw, too, you know? But that was the best. Somewhere I have those Space Wars recorded on videotape because I should have wanted to re I should have recorded the whole thing, but I recorded the Space Wars, you know, and the space station going do 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 and James Bond firing lasers. I just love that, you know. Here's the conclusion. Uh -huh. pilot the space shuttle and get the last of those orbs that were going to destroy the planet and they had to fire lasers. Do, 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 do. Really? Yeah, I, I haven't seen this, so I'll have to look at it. That was, um, 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 Moonraker. Moonraker? Okay. Yeah, that was I Moonraker. That. that was the, the, the futuristic one, right? Yeah, that was at the end, you know, once they had defeated all the bad guys and, uh, blow, um, you know, the, then the, they had to go into the space shuttle just at the end and get the last of those death orbs that were going to... Mm -hmm. put poison on the planet and they had to go manual control and James Bond uh, his girlfriend piloted the shuttle and James Bond was firing the lasers and doo -doo 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 -doo. it was exciting lasers mm, wow lasers you know how much I love lasers kind of cool. They've kind of changed up the schedule on Sci-Fi Saturday on Me TV. You know okay. what they have? No, I don't. The, uh, five o'clock? The Wild Wild West. Really? The old one from the 60s. Isn't that great? Yeah. I was very happy to see that. Because I loved that as a kid. Man, was I happy. Really? Okay. They're going to be showing that. I think even they're going to be starting at Friday's or something, I'm not sure, but showing the old Star Trek, at least on Fridays at 4 o'clock or so. I'll have to oh, really? double check, yeah. I'll have to check that. I know that they had made an announcement that they were making changes in their schedule. Yes, they did. And, and I think Land of the Giants is going to be on every week, too. I think. I don't know for sure. We'll have to see, because that um, would be exciting for me. Yeah, I would love to see that If series. it was in the daytime, not at night, not late at night, because I can't stay up that late, you know? I know. I, well, this was just a tribute, see, so yeah. I made it a point to stay up late. Yeah. And, uh, I still got my church in, in a sense. I just had to do it at a later hour. Yeah, yeah. 
but it was exciting to see yes. those shows. And I had fun with that uh, time tunnel. I'll do it again. Wonderful. That's what a cool thing. Yeah. Fascinating. Didn't that sound like yep, time yep, tunnel music? Does, yep, it does. Yep, it does. Something like that. I love the old Doctor Who's that went, you know, da 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 That was excellent. Yeah, I don't know that melody there. It was fantastic. I have to get familiar with that. But anyway, getting back to time travel, yeah, I uh, there. Are, I think I would go back more with the Old Testament times and the New Testament yeah, times. Yeah. The Book of Esther is pretty cool too. Yes, it is. Yes. You familiar with that story? Mm -hmm. The one where mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> yep. Queen Queen Vashti mm -hmm. decided she didn't want to parade herself in front of her husband. And yeah, her, yeah. And uh, whoever the mm -hmm. council of the king was at that time. Yep, yep. Because they said the Bible says she was a really good-looking lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of them said, "Well, if you let that lady get away with this." Then all the other women in the whole kingdom will be doing the same thing, despising their husbands and things like that. So that king says, okay, we'll have to fix that. And so he gets rid of Queen Vashti as far uh -huh. as being the queen. Mm -hmm. And then they have this little contest mm -hmm. to get these ladies, virgins and things like that, to see who will be the next mm -hmm. queen. And Esther's chosen. And she was raised by Mordecai, mm -hmm. um, her uncle or cousin or something like that. And uh, he tells tells um, Esther, don't let anyone know you're Jewish. Keep that under wraps. Keep mm -hmm. it low key. Uh, uh, if he comes over here, I'll get him. Yeah, please. So anyway, um, Esther goes to the training. She gets selected by the mm -hmm. king. Mm -hmm. And there's this wicked guy named Haman who uh, gets elevated by the mm -hmm. king, right? Mm -hmm. And so everybody's bowing down before him, except for Mordecai didn't bow down before. He said, I'm not going to bow down to this guy and pay yeah. him homage. And that didn't sit well with Haman. Haman finds out he's a Jew, so Haman says, okay, I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to wipe out the whole Jewish people mm -hmm. because this guy won't give me honor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting when you, you know, what goes around comes around. I know the Bible doesn't teach that, but yeah. when you hear this story, it makes you think that because... Mm -hmm. Uh, when um, Haman sets up this plot mm -hmm. to hang Mordecai, mm -hmm. Mordecai tells Esther, right? So Esther sets up Haman by making this mm -hmm. dinner in honor of Haman and for the, the, the king. Mm -hmm. Xerxes, I think, was his name. Xerxes was his mm -hmm. name. And then as soon as Esther sets up the dinner and Haman is there, I think I got it. Good. <coughs> Haman was there, and he thinks he's going to get all honored everything and so in front of Haman and the king Esther says the king says what do you want and the queen says I want you to save my life mm -hmm. and the life of my people and the king's like what do you mean because there's a guy that um, mm -hmm. wants us all destroyed uh -huh. so can you imagine that and so then the king is angry like who is this person that would dare want to kill you my wife and, yeah. and her people and the queen and Esther says it's Haman sitting right there next to you. Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yep. And so the king walks off. He was like ticked. He just like, he was like really ticked, right? He mm -hmm. just walks off. And so Haman's like begging Esther for his life. And so right when Haman's begging for his life, the king walks in and thinks that he's trying to make an advance to her. It's bad enough you want to... Kill my wife and my people. Now you're yeah, messing yeah. with my wife. <laughs> and, so, and, and one of the kings, the, the king's mm -hmm. men said, Hey, let's hang him up on the gallows. And so they yeah. hung Haman on the same gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Yep, yep. Hung him up on those. Oh, boy, that'd be kind of cool to go back in time and witness that. Yes, definitely. So, but, you know, the good Lord has a way of taking care of his people. He does, yeah. <laughs> so... That's an interesting story. And then, let's see, what else? Um, um, if I could go back in time. I'd probably like to... Okay. Um, Elisha. Mm -hmm. Elijah and Elisha. I think I'd like to see that whirlwind when... Yes, yes. When he was taken up into mm -hmm. heaven. And that's interesting, that story, because, you know, um, Elisha mm -hmm. was like the protege of Elijah. Yeah. And... So Elijah says, okay, before I go 
before I leave you, before I go into heaven, what do you want me to do for you? And Elisha says, I want double what you have. I want a double portion. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Elisha says, ooh, that's a hard request, but I tell you what, when I'm taken into heaven, if you see me, you'll get your request. Mm-hmm. If you don't see me, then you won't. And then, of course, when the whirlwind came and it was shoved aside and, and Elisha's being taken to heaven, Elisha, I mean, Elijah's taken to heaven, Elisha sees it. Yep. So he ends up getting double. Yep. <coughs> That's pretty cool. Yep. And let's see, what are the Old Testament stories? God, there's so, there's so, so many fun Old Testament stories. Yeah. I'm really sorry that there's this little creature is... Yeah, this gnat. ...giving us a fit here. Now, a little gnat. I know. God created that thing. You know what that reminds me of? What? Did you ever see... Ellen DeGeneres um, debut on on the Tonight Show. No, I never did. It was the funniest thing. She had a conversation with God on the telephone. Uh huh. And she was asking why did God create? Uh, if I remember, I think it was spiders or mm-hmm. some other creature like like mm-hmm. that, some kind of an insect. And it was funny when the conversation started because. Mm-hmm. Ellen is on the phone. She's like, hello, can I speak with God, please? Mm-hmm. Just a minute. So God gets on the phone. Hi, this is God. And mm-hmm. Ella's like, God, this is Ellen. And the Lord's like, who? Ellen, mm-hmm. Ellen, the generous. I don't remember. You know, it's just, 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 yeah. just, you know, just cute little humor. And then finally the <laughs> Lord remembers who Ellen is, right? Yeah. And so then Ellen says, I want to know, can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. How come you created this particular insect here? Yeah. You know? And uh, that was, uh, it was just a, it was just a cute, fun conversation. One I didn't think it was blasphemous or anything No, like no. That. I thought it was just genuinely yeah. humorous and funny. And uh, then there was an episode, a scene in the conversation where God sneezes. And when she says, God bless you, uh, then she says, oh, you're already God, so God bless yourself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, okay. I just thought that was so funny. Yeah, exactly. It's just, just cute humor. It is. You it know, really normally I'd give you some of the secret ingredient, but I'd have to give you um, one of these things to put on it because insects like that love sweet things. All right, I'll take that now. I need one anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a good conversation or a fact. But no, you know, that, that was just a fun, it's fun kind of- skit with a young Ellen at the time. Yeah. You know, there's humor that can, Christian humor that can be ma- made reverently, and there's yeah. blasphemous humor. Yeah, I don't I'm care against. for the blasphemous humor. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, they made an excellent show, and I was worried it was going to be blasphemous or make mock the Catholic Church. It was called Bless Me, Father. It was from BBC. It was the nicest, sweetest, um, you know, comedy show about the Catholic uh, faith. There are two priests in Ireland. And what they had to go through to keep their congregation together and there's some misadventures. But it was written absolutely from a Catholic point of view because I got the whole thing. Whoever wrote it was a devout Catholic. It was just amusing, you know, about hearing confessions or doing other things or what a new priest does to get to the parish or the parish bazaar. I mean, it was just... Oh, and even did a Christmas special or that, or on Christmas Day. It was just nice. It was cool. just hilarious. Uh-huh. And yeah, that was yeah, a that's, sweet that's show. Cool when, it, when it's clean, you know, I like clean comedy. Yeah, it's very clean, very reverent, but it was funny and it poked gentle fun at the Catholic faith, but not blasphemous, not mocking it, but something yeah. Catholics we could laugh at in our situations because we've kind of been there yeah. and have done that and we're worried, what if this happened? What if, oh my, some yeah, of I it was, is on You me. know, speaking of clean humor, I, yeah. I prefer to clean humor because you, you can take your children, your grandchildren yeah. to see that and not expose them to bad stuff. Exactly, I'd let my kids watch it. You know, it's just, it just was hilarious, just... I mean, some episodes were better than others. I, I don't have the whole series. I wish I had any on tape. It was, it was sweet and just good, you know, happy memories of the old days of the Catholic Church. You know, uh-huh, just happy uh-huh. memories. Just unbelievable, yeah. you know. It's just you know, hilarious, really, you know, just unbelievable. You know, I can't remember everything. Let's see. Oh, yeah, hilarious. Let's see. I gotta work on that some more. Mm-hmm. That's the middle part of the dance of the sugar plum fair. I'm mm-hmm. trying to get that prepared for the holiday. Let me try it again. Wait, Christmas is coming up sooner than you think. I know it. Ooh. 
Well, I don't think in the Garden of Eden there were these bad insects. Like wasps or flies. So I think God actually created them to punish us sinners as part of the fall. The evil insects that sting you. Know, you I never thought of that. But you Are know, flies that give you disease. But though the, the insects would have been beautiful in the Garden of Eden. Everything was perfect. Yeah, but was. after the it was fall, it was corru corrupt. Yeah, everything changed during the fall. You know what I find interesting? And this isn't necessarily time travel, but uh -huh. you remember when they were expelled from the garden? Yes. Do you know the reason why God had to expel them? Mm -hmm. You remember the verse that says, we have to expel them, otherwise they'll eat the fruit and live yes. forever? Yes. Well, uh, I personally believe, and I've heard theologians say that, if Adam and Eve had eaten that fruit, yes. they would have lived, but they would have been in that sinful state exactly. that they were in. And then they would have been, they would have lived in that sinful state for all time. And that would have been horrible. It would have been, yes. So God had to put the yes. angel and the cherubim to protect that, exactly. that uh, tree mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. until Christ could come and fix the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Correctly by dying on the cross and shedding his blood. Absolutely. And now that that's been done, and God can offer a pardon, everything will be that as it was before eventually. Yeah. Well, he even said in, in the book of Revelation, I will see to it that the victor eats from the tree of life which grows in the garden of my God. That's in heaven. Yeah. So eventually he will see it. It's probably a very nice fruit. In heaven we will eat of that fruit of the tree of life. Yeah, and I bet that fruit. You know another thing that I think must have been really good? What? The manna that the children oh, yes. of Israel had eaten. Wonderful, yes. You think this is good? Yeah. This Nature Valley yeah. snack. I would like to go back in time and eat some of that manna. That would be very good. Yeah. Of course they complain. Just see what it tastes like, you know. They complain to Moses and Aaron. Why are we sent to die and eat this wretched food? They complained about the manna. Then God sent them seraph serpents. You know that story, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I don't think God was doing that because he was being cruel. Yeah, exactly. I think it was more of a teaching thing. It was. It was exactly. To teach them to be thankful or something. Exactly. Effect. Mm hmm. Because they had been in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'd been like slaves for like 400 years. And yeah. Now they're free. Exactly. And they're eating manna all the time. Exactly. I know they weren't maybe eating a Big Mac or something. At yeah, the, exactly. Well, I know that didn't exist. I mean, you said yeah, exactly. Analogy, that manna must have tasted pretty good. Yeah, exactly. I wish I had bug spray. I'd spray that thing. Mm -hmm. That little insect. I'd spray it. Well, we'll just have to let the insect yeah. fly around on the cafe. Yep. We have another guest on the cafe, folks. Little Nat. So yeah, now that we got Nat. two guests, we got me, and we got the little Nat. <laughs> Well, speaking of Nat, let's play a Nat King Cole song. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, but the insects like, um, you know, uh, uh, butterflies would have been very good, but I don't think that before the fall they would have had stinging insects or insects with germs because there's no disease. So no flies, no ugly, hideous horse flies or anything like that, you know, yeah. that make a person upset. Any pollinating insects would be very beautiful. I mean, they might have had honeybees without stingers, but something really, really nice or butterfly type of things or, yeah, you know, something beautiful. Wasps, no, no, they sting. Yeah. yeah. Do have you, you ever... heard this song by chance? No, I don't. It's called Nature Boy. Have you ever been stung by a hornet? Oh, yes, like a I wasp? Have. Same here. I got stung by a yellow jacket once. Yes, yes. I had reached my hand into a little bush, and that thing... Yep. And it literally made my hand swell. I had to go to the hospital to get checked to make sure. It was a big lump that big. Literally. Yeah, yeah. But I was okay. just had to wait till it healed. Yeah. Well, one time when I was at my, my apartment, it, I don't know, there must have been a yellow jacket or a hornet that got confused and got into my bedroom. Mother crawled into the door or something. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping and I just got up briefly and I went back to sleep and I, ow! It felt like someone had hit me with hot fire. Mm -hmm. I thought, is there a needle here? This feels like hot fire. And I turned on the light and there was a yellow jacket in my bed. I had stepped, I put my hand on the the yellow jacket. It was about mm -hmm. 3 a.m. in the morning and my heart said, oh man. Mm -hmm. I kept swatting it, swatting it. Finally, I got it outside, and do you remember the line in, um, uh, um, what was that, the naked, 
time from Star Trek. Uh, oh, you interrupted my song. There'll be no ice cream for you tonight. So I said to the Wallace, I got outside, oh, you stung me. There'll be no ice cream for you tonight. And then I shut the door and tried to go back to sleep. I thankfully was, but I felt lethar lethar lethargic. Actually, it was one of the staff members who advised I crush up some aspirin, even gave me some aspirin, put mm -hmm. a paste um, on from water and put it on the wound because yeah. it sucked up the poison. So that was good. But yeah, I just... Those things hurt, you know? Oh, I know. It, I, I, it, it's very painful. It just felt like somebody took a giant needle and just... Exactly, with fire or something. My hand. Yeah, yeah. It was horrifying, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been stung. There was another time uh, a yellow jacket or a wasp or something got inside my collar and I didn't know he was in there. Yeah. And a sucker stung me twice before I could get him off. Because it was from the back. Oh. It, just, it, it was so painful. He got me right in the back shoulder blade there. He was oh. trapped in there. I don't know how he got into my clothing, but he did. And he stung me twice before it died. Ouch. Oh, it hurt. It hurt really bad. Yeah. That was more painful in the back than it ever was. Yeah. On my hand, it was debilit debilitating. I literally fell to the ground. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. And then all of a sudden... When I shook it off, it just kind of hobbled on the Yeah, ground. yeah. That was very, very painful. Yeah. But you're right. I don't think insects, as far as the effect they have on mankind, was like that in the garden. Exactly. It wasn't, so. yeah. Because everything... One time I stepped on a honeybee. This is when I was 12 years old. I was just outside barefoot, mm -hmm. just in the backyard, mm -hmm. playing science fiction or whatever. And I stepped on a... Ow! Having a sort of... Whoa! What happened? Did I step on a needle? And a honeybee was right there dangling, and my mother had to get out the... Yeah, you know, those the, little the tweezers. Insect. Yeah, with a little yeah. tweezers. Mm -hmm. My foot swelled up for about a month, and I couldn't even take karate. My karate lessons, I yeah. had to be excused because my foot had swelled up, you know, with the mm -hmm. venom. And just, yeah. Oh man, that mm -hmm. was very. Speaking difficult. of karate, I'm going to play the theme to Kung Fu. We're mm -hmm. almost out of time. That was very hard, and just oh yeah. whoa. What a thing, you know. My grandmother, remember I talked to her about my grandmother, how he, she and I always talked on the phone, you know? Uh-huh. I talked about that on one of the cafes. Well, she had, was kind of um, on her back because of um, hip surgery or back surgery or something. And so she had had a bad back, and I had had my foot, because I told her all about this. And it's like, yeah, it's amazing. My back and your foot, amazing. So we both kind of laid up at the same time. Kind of interesting, you know. Yeah, I couldn't train for about a month or so because it was still swollen. Just well, just a honeybee, you know, that I stepped on was on the ground and just instinctively stung me. Of course, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, 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 it's painful. Yeah, it's very painful. That was the theme to Kung Fu with David Carradine. Yeah, I don't my, know if you recognize that or not. No, it was the theme to it. Matter of fact, I wonder even how I put my boots on to go to school at that time. I can't remember how. I must have done it somehow. Maybe I had bigger boots or something. I don't yeah, know. who knows? I don't remember. Uh, mm -hmm. But that was wild, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. But anyway, getting back to the garden. Yeah, I. You know what I think? What? Even if there were insects in the garden. Yeah. I think that when the fall came, the entire universe was altered. Yeah. Kind of like that scene in mm -hmm. <coughs> the movie with Michael J. Fox, Back mm -hmm. to the Future. Yeah. You remember when, uh, in the first film, Michael J. Fox goes back into the past. Yeah. <coughs> and um, <coughs> his uh, enemy, I guess, mm -hmm. his name is Biff. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> Biff in the future, you know, who was older. Yes. He tells he tells Biff, the young Biff himself, mm -hmm. I want you to take this almanac. You'll be able to predict the future as far as get everything right because it'll mm -hmm. tell you what's going to already happen. So the younger Biff gets the almanac from the older Biff from the future yep. and he starts betting on races and stuff. He already oh, knows yeah, what yeah. the almanac tells you, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So he ends up a zillionaire and when Michael J. Fox goes back to the present, it's altered. It's the same people, yeah. but they're altered. The, the same circumstance, the same situation. That's a crude analogy of what I think it was like in the garden. Oh uh, Yeah, exactly. Same garden, uh -huh. just everything was altered. Everything that was good turns yeah. bad. Yeah, I don't think the whole universe was altered, just the planet Earth. I'm no, sure. I, well, I'll tell you why I think the universe. What? Because isn't there a verse that says something about the creation itself and yeah, and all moaning? Yeah, I think that just means Earth. I don't think that means the whole universe, just all of create on planet Earth. I just kind of assumed. I didn't think mm -hmm. all of the universe. Well, just I'm not Earth, a theologian. You know, nor am I. I, yeah. I, I could. 
I could be dead wrong, but yeah. it would make sense if it was the whole universe in yeah. a sense because uh -huh. sin is yeah, a yeah. universal problem if you think about it. Mm, I thought it was just an Earth problem for us Earthlings on planet Earth. Well, what planet about the war in heaven, you know? That's well, yeah, there was a war in heaven, but heaven is uh, not even in the universe. It's yeah, not really on the true. other. I'm sure there are planets out there in the galaxy or those that are pristine and beautiful. I wouldn't mind going to one of them and escaping the planet Earth to a beautiful paradise that is pristine there's no original sin the people have no i'm sure that probably exists well you know planet even Earth. In, you know what i think even <coughs> if you took two human beings from yeah. this planet and put them into another perfect planet say millions of miles yes, away yes. i think the sin problem would still be there it would it would be there and we'd probably mess it up we'd have this to. is why i think mm. uh in order to fix that not only the death of christ mm. but when you have i think you have to physically die yes yes also to get free of that for good you do, you do, actually. And, you know, I was listening to Pastor James McDonald mm -hmm. just this morning. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the constellation and the planets in space mm -hmm. and using that as an analogy of how Jesus mm -hmm. is Lord because mm -hmm. he is the creator of the entire universe and holds yeah. it all together. And he was using the analogy of how far the planet Pluto is yeah, from, yeah. from Earth and things like that and uh -huh. the other millions and billions of galaxies. Uh -huh. And Jesus owns it all. Yep, he's yep. in control of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's he's Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good way to just about end the cafe by saying that Jesus yes. is the Lord, which is the truth. That is the truth. He owns the molecules, the invisible stuff that holds matter together. Mm -hmm. He controls all the planets in the constellation. Yes, he does. And yep, he does. Stuff like that, and that makes him distinct. Yep. And that's what Pastor McDonald was talking about just this morning on the radio. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I found it interesting. It was just he was talking about all the invisible things that you don't see, mm -hmm. the atoms, molecules, mm -hmm. and things that hold together, all mm -hmm. because of Jesus. Yep. So that was pretty cool. Yep. But getting back to um, whether it's the whole universe or just the earth, I don't know, but exactly. I do know that uh, everything will eventually be righted. It will, yes, finally. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Christ will eventually come back, yep. right all the wrongs, mm, straight yes, all yes. the crooked roads, and yep. so on. But in the meantime, yep. you can still keep believing and have faith and whatever. Yep. You know, it's going to be a change of the subject. It's going to be so exciting, again, having Harold and Francine's wedding on the show. Yes, it will Thursday. be, yes. I'm humbled and really looking forward mm -hmm. to that. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I assume they must have been planning this wedding. I don't mean here on the show, but just yes. the wedding in general for quite mm -hmm. some time. So I couldn't be more proud of those two. Yep. I think of, I think of any bride, no matter what the circumstance, mm -hmm. is lovely. Oh, yes, yes. It's a lovely thing to see mm -hmm. a bride mm -hmm. walk down the aisle mm -hmm. and stuff. So it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. So good Lord willing, next week we'll, we'll be doing that. We'll... Uh, yep. Witnessed their wedding right yes. here on the cafe. I haven't decided what set we'll use. I might just use this set here mm -hmm. that we're on. I mm -hmm. think that would be something to remember years mm -hmm. from now. Maybe even a garden set or just a meadow and flower set or something unusual, something special for a wedding, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll look through the computers. We'll mm -hmm. find something mm -hmm. there. Any final words you want to say? Because we're running out of time. Can't think of anything, yep. Well, I tell you, um, I know we were talking about time travel and yes. going back to the Old Testament. Yeah and use our imagination, but there is one thing that is truth. The Bible, the Word of God is truth. Absolutely, absolutely. And all those stories in the Old Testament are truth. Yep, they are, so yep. So we weren't, I wasn't here to try to change. Exactly, exactly. Or yeah, or yeah. Where I just wanted to exactly. have fun with my imagination. Yep. And on that note, thanks for tuning in uh, to ASAP Cafe. This was just a casual show, but Harold and Francine will be getting married on our show next week, and I'm very humbled. And mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So until that time, I'm your host, Asaf Adonai, and on my left, affectionately, our aging rocker. And you can watch any of those fun Irwin Allen shows, Time <laughs> Tunnel, Lost in Space, Land of the Giants, my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just have fun. Yep. So until our next show, Maranatha. yourself at home and then I'll finish having yep. some goodies and I'll make you a copy of this. No, oh, wonderful. Where should we go?